And again, this just has MicroPoly turned on, but we need to swap this MicroPoly out, it's not working. So again, we can go through here, and let's just look at this. We're gonna hold down Alt, click that vortex, Alt tap it, and that's gonna throw it out here. And you can see how this is set up. We'll turn our floor on again. It's perfectly set up in that grid, so we know this is gonna sew up on the right, left, and top, and bottom. But what we need to do is do something similar to this, but it needs to be welded on all sides. So what I did was I basically, and we can have both of them in the same scene temporarily if you want. I can go in here to append, and it doesn't matter. I can append any any primitive I append to something that's a PolyMesh 3D is gonna be a PolyMesh 3D ring. Then I go down here to initialize. Uh, if I do like, let's say six, six, and then six resolution for a Q grid, that'll give us a perfect Q grid right in here. Uh, if you wanna make sure, you can go to Deformation Unify. And again, if it's off or something, it, this wouldn't be, but just in case you can hit Unify, it'll take that bounding box and snap it to that grid there. If we go out of solo mode, you're gonna see, okay, perfect. However, this thing here needs to be rotated like this. And I go into solo mode here, and this hole needs to be punched out. So you can go through here, you can alt paint over these with a Z modeler brush, BZM. You can hover over a face, you can say delete a single poly and delete all those out. Alternatively, you can go through here with like your select lasso brush, and you can just grab all those polygons, invert that, hold down control shift alt to get rid of those, and then geometry, modify topology, delete hidden, use your custom menu. So we have kind of, this is kind of working, but it's way outside of my plane, and I need this to weld to another version. So what I'm gonna do is go to my Z modeler brush, BZM, hover over a point, and just say delete point. So we're gonna delete all of these points along here. It's still too big. Well, you know you can go down here and say deformation unify, and it'll fit it perfectly in there. Now, this was just, this vortex in here is just there to kind of show you what was going on. I'm just going to delete that out of our scene. So now we have this geometry. At this point, you could go ahead and say, go into your Z modeler brush, say maybe Q mesh polygroup all, and just go ahead and give it thickness. Now we can do two versions actually. Um, if you want to have it weld though, you're going to need to go through here and say delete a single poly. And all the way through here, you're going to need to delete all those so that as these things Let's go ahead and reset this. If you drag these over uh, exactly one and you have another face next to this when you apply the micro poly, those will line up perfectly. And same thing on the top here. You want these things to line up and weld together. So something to keep in mind. So you know what, we'll use this one. We'll say thickness and we'll go ahead and clone that off. And then for this one, we're gonna undo back to where we just had this one plane here. And on this one, let's go hold down Alt. I'm gonna tap all these faces. And on this last one, I'm gonna hold down on my pin tablet and then let go of Alt. Now if I keep tapping Alt, I'll get new poly groups. So I can use those to my advantage too later on. Uh, and we'll call this net single. So now if we go back to our net here and I wanna swap out these micro polys, I can say, okay, micro poly is on. If I go in here, they don't exist in here. What I need to do is hold down control and now I can grab them. So I can grab net single or I can hold down control and net thickness. Now, if you love this result, like you, you're gonna use these all the time, go up here to say net thickness and go to tool, save as, and save it in C program files, pixel logic, ZBrush 2021, micro poly or whatever version of ZBrush. If this is in the future and you're in 2022, then probably the same directory, but ZBrush 2022, micro poly, and then save it in here. So we have net thickness Z tool, go ahead and save that. And now when you go in here and you turn on dynamic and you have micro poly turned on, boom, you got net thickness right here. You can go ahead and select it. And that's actually a cool, pretty cool result. Look at that, pretty neat. So anyway, I was gonna turn micro poly off there and dynamic off. But back here, um, so we use net thickness and it actually has, you know, it's being driven by a micro poly and it has front and back thickness, which is kind of cool. But now on the top here, we'd have to go through and close all those holes. Not exactly what I'm looking for. However, if we grab net single, this is just single sided, but we remember we can always add dynamic thickness later. So now if we want to treat this as cloth, if we want to go through here and hold down control alt again, if we turn off dynamic, we're just treating these big polygon shapes as cloth. So if we mask this up here, turn dynamic on and go to like brush cloth hook, it'll look like we're pulling this net around. Let's turn off X symmetry. It'll look like we're pulling this net around and we kind of are, but really all we're pulling around is these faces which are driving this. 
if you want, you can go through here and you can say apply. Now this is real geometry, so when you go through here, you can actually pull around this real geometry. Of course, there's no thickness there yet, but remember, we've played around with this already. You can go in here to dynamic. Um, this is kind of cool too. It went through and it <laughs> turned every face into that micropoly. Let's go and turn that off. We're going to use this to add some dynamic thickness. And the cool thing about this is that dynamic thickness already closes those holes for us. So now we have dynamic thickness. We can go through here, brush cloth hook, and now we're pulling around this geometry here. It's all real geometry with dynamic thickness. We have inflate turned on as well. So there we go. Turn dynamic off, turn it on, and we can go ahead and turn our floor off as well. And if you're ready to make this real geometry, this dynamic, remember it's not real yet, you can hit apply and now that dynamic is real geometry. So we can go through here and we can mask this out, run that gravity simulation, and now all of these front and back thickness and side polygons is all real geometry. And what I was able to do on top of this, I'm not going to go into this now, was grab all of these purple polygroups in here and apply a nano mesh later. So we just basically did a nano mesh and then I was able to go through there and add little knots uh, after the fact. So just little stacking things you can do uh, to get that result that you're looking for.